Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Let me check to make sure we're rolling, and we are. It is time for Sat Chat, which you probably already know because that's how I start every Sat Chat, making sure the camera's working. Because if I'm looking at the lens, I can't tell what the, what the screen is doing. Oh, it's actually Friday night. I try to film the Sat Chats Wednesday, uh, Friday, Wednesday. Friday afternoon, I'm start I should just start over, oh my gosh. I try to film them like during the day, like before dinner anyway, um, and I try to finish up for the week by dinner time on Friday night, but this week is not one of those weeks. This has like been the longest week ever between the election and the daylight savings time and coronavirus. I feel like it's 10 o'clock or midnight, it's only eight o'clock, but it feels so late. <laughs> But, uh, but I am here, this will go up Saturday morning as always, and um, how are you doing? How are you surviving this week? This has been weird, surreal, and kind of stressful. Um, but I am here to bring you some happy, hopefully, uh, distraction from the craziness that is the world. The first thing I do want to mention, because there's a deadline of 7 p.m. tonight, so Saturday night, 7 p.m., um, registration closes for Art of the Carolinas, so if you're thinking of taking any of the workshops from me or any of the other instructors, that's a registration deadline. Um, all the classes will be taking place next week. So um, none of the classes take place at the same time, so you could take a bunch of classes from different people if you wanted to. My classes are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, so I will show you the projects in case you're interested in signing up, and I will link the um, uh, the class, I will link the registration page down below. This is Sweet Treats. This is happening Monday. And, um, I, geez, I don't, I think I only have like one person signed up for this, so they're going to get a private lesson. I think everyone's going to get a very individual lesson here because the deal with these classes, and I've mentioned it, I think, in every sat check, so I want to make sure that before you sign up, you know, um, they're live. You have to be there. Uh, when the class starts with all your supplies ready to roll because there's no recording for those classes um, I have tried to get them to provide that but they can't um, so uh, So make sure you're ready to go if you sign up for one of these classes um, I will eventually have these projects in other classes of mine coming up in the future. They're self-paced and on-demand um, With lifetime access, but for these art of the Carolina classes that I'm teaching through art of Carolinas They are live only so just I just want to make sure that you don't spend the money for the class and then you can't make it um, because there isn't a recording. Um, but I think it's going to be a great time. The classes are small, and it's going to be um, it's going to be fun for me because I'll get to um, I'll get to um, hang out in a more intimate setting, and it'll be more like teaching in person, teaching uh, private lessons and things like that. I used to do before um, I had kids, <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. So that's the first one. That's sweet treats, and I'm going to prepare a pattern for this. So. Um, if my student or students don't want to draw, they can trace it. And um, actually, if I just have one student, I guess they could just I could teach them whatever they want to learn. <laughs> you just never know. It's so crazy. Um, and then the second class, which is Tuesday night, is uh, the wildflower bouquet class. And we'll do two autumn wildflower bouquets, and we're going to paint them at the same time because this is a really wet and juicy type of painting. So there's a lot of situations where your paper is going to be too wet to carry on with. So we'll just switch back and forth between the paintings so that there's no dead time. I'm really just, I want to make sure that people are getting their money's worth in these classes since it is kind of like a, a live only class. So um, so that's my goal. I'll be prepping, um, I'll actually be prepping partially this weekend and then um, the day of each class to make sure that I can get as much in there as I can so that people get their money's worth. And then the oil painting class, well, one of the, the, the main projects that we're going to do will be the ball jar in oils. Um, I do have a tutorial of a watercolor version of this if you're interested, but this was from a still life I set up last year. It's a lot of fun to paint. We're going to do this in water mixable oils. It's actually an intro to water mixable oils, so if you've been looking to um, get started in water mixable oils, that's going to be a great kind of primer class or primer. Uh, but you could also use gouache or traditional oils if you wanted to for that class So you don't have to go out and buy water mixable oils if you already have one of those two mediums Plus it's pretty close So you probably getting to a store to buy that would be a little difficult and ordering online would probably be pretty Impossible because it's so close. But anyway deadlines tonight 7 p.m. Eastern time to sign up and then the class my classes are Monday Tuesday Wednesday 
5 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So, um, so there's that. I wanted to get that out of the way. Um, what else is new? I actually did jot a few things down on my phone because I've just been um, so distracted this week. I did a video this week. Um, you might be interested. I did a live stream, kind of spontaneous. Uh, I did it spontaneously. I didn't want to hype it up or anything because. I was really afraid that I might not be able to figure out how to live stream on YouTube anymore because, um, oh, oh, by the way, the classes are going to be done via Zoom and they're going to, I'm going to have a moderator, my husband's going to moderate questions and then, um, if it's a real small class, I'll probably just have the, the students be able to mute and unmute themselves as we're going. Uh, we'll see how, how chaotic that gets. But I have a moderator on this end and then back at Art of Carolinas, they have a moderator there too. So it should be, it should be, they're handling the tech, so every I just gotta handle the creativity. It should be fine. Um, so anyway, I did a live stream on Wednesday because I'd had a few people ask me uh, because I did a watercolor palette tour a couple of years ago, and I've added to my collection of watercolor palettes. Uh, they spark joy. I did Murray Kondo my house, but the palettes spark joy. I got rid of two of like my palettes lot when I did the Murray Kondo, and I got rid of like half of my possessions, so it was a big deal. But watercolor palettes, I'm like I can't part with these. I parted with two. And then I ended up rebuying one of the ones that I gave away because I'm like, you know, I really like this and it's such a great deal and it's so wonderful to recommend for um, for beginners and children and stuff. So anyway, um, so that is up on my channel. I did that live and it was really, I really missed it. I missed hanging out on the live streams. Um, I did have a little technical issue, but it was... Um, but I think happened because I told the kids I'm streaming and my son went off to do some errands. I think he might have left his TV going like Netflix or something. And um, I don't think they registered with the girls because I was waiting till they were done their Zoom classes because that's how they are doing school three days out of the week. Uh, and the other two are in person. So uh, I figured, OK, they're done. They're done Zooming. So uh, I should be all right. But and I told them I was streaming, but I don't think it registered that they needed to stay off the Internet. So I think that's why the picture got a little choppy, but the audio is fine. And it's talking about palettes. It's not like instructing or anything. I'm showing palettes and talking about palettes. So in bits and pieces, parts of that stream, it's like two and a half hours long. There are a few parts where it does get a little fuzzy. Some people said it cleared up, though, for the replay. Um, but um, but I did I did go back and, and listen to it so I could like put in all the list the products that I showed in case anyone was interested. Uh, but that was a lot of fun. And uh, honestly, the reason I did it was because, you know, I don't know if you've been like out of sorts and stressed. This is like the longest year ever. Doesn't it feel like we've aged like a decade? <laughs> this year. Um, and then like coronavirus cases in Maine have just just spiked. Um, we would get maybe a couple of cases a day, maybe 20. And it's been like 130, 150, 180. It's it's and for a small population state, that's kind of um, it's kind of jarring. Uh, so, you know, with all that going on and, you know, it's still election night at Friday evening when I'm recording this, it's still election night in America. So that that's still ongoing. Um, it's just been kind of like unsettling. And, um, and so I took out all my palettes because I wanted to reorganize them. They were kind of jumbled on a shelf. And as I was like going through them and opening them up and looking at them, I just felt so like happy and, and just calm and contented. It was so pleasant that I thought, oh. I'm going to do a live stream of this because, well, I asked on Instagram if anybody would like that and the overwhelming response was yes. It was just such a comforting thing to go through those. There's there's something called, uh, I, I listened to an audiobook by one of the women that's the psych uh, hoarding specialists on hoarders, Robin Z Zajo, Dr. Robin Zajo, I think. I'm probably mispronouncing her last name, but anyway, she wrote a book called, I'm pretty sure it's her, uh, wrote a book called The Hoarder and You, and um, it just talked about how like there's a kind of a spectrum, and a lot of people just kind of fall on the spectrum of, um, of hoarding, and she talked about comfort clutter, and I'm like, oh yeah, those palettes, those watercolor palettes are my comfort clutter. I did feel very, um, but I, I do use them all. I'll go back to this one and that one. Some I don't go back to unless I'm comparing them to something else I've got just as a point of reference, but, um, but yeah, just flipping through them, opening them up, looking at my swatches, looking at the paints, you know, I wanted to go through them to make sure none of the paints were traveling because I have some palettes where when you close them, some of the paints are on the lid and then some are on the bottom. And I, I really don't like that style of palette. Um, and sometimes, especially if you have any of them on their side, the paint can travel, especially if it's a paint that contains honey or is a very like, um, uh, is a very, I don't know the words, a moisture attracting paint, like uh, paints with honey. Some paints just want to just suck in the moisture from the air and they'll, they'll kind of travel out of their pans. Uh, so I wanted to check on those, make sure everything was stored right. Nothing was kind of stuck in there, stuck in my shelves, cattywampus and tipped because then the paint can travel. Um, 
So I just like to go through and check and make sure that if anything is starting to seep out of a pan, I can kind of scrape it back in with a palette knife and, and uh, take care of things. But I, I just had such a good time going through my palettes that I thought maybe other people would too. And, uh, and it was fun. And we all, we all had a good time. And that is up on my YouTube channel. And you can see the chat. You can see what people are chit-chatting about. I, um, with a new YouTube way to stream, and I just went the, like, the webcam route, the easiest way, uh, that you could. It was actually pretty easy because I could see the chat on the page where I can see what my camera sees. I could see the chat. So that was really, that was really handy because it was just me. The kids were doing their thing. Um, they're not really, they're not really that, they do a great job at moderating, but they're not that keen on moderating. They want to do their own thing and I don't blame them. They don't want to hang around and talk about paint for two and a half hours. I can't blame them for that after they've been in school all day. So, um, so that was fun. That's on my channel. Uh, have some other things. What else? I have a review for some really, really cheap brush markers and it was like a set of 48 and when the review went live, the markers were actually like $16 for the set on Amazon. It was crazy. Um, and then the, the price shot up the next day, but I mean, that was cheaper than it was when I, when I recorded the review and uh, had mentioned what they cost per marker. I think that's kind of worth it for the bag because it's got like, um, it's got like a grid in it that holds the markers in place. Um, I wasn't that crazy about the markers. They were fine for stamping projects, but they, they didn't flow ink fast enough for keeping up with the sketch. But anyway, if you're interested in marker reviews, that's on there too. Um, I actually like watching reviews of products that I own from other people because then I get different ideas on how to use things and um, I think that's kind of fun. So this brings me to another point, something I want to ask you. Um, I was thinking I want to go through, because we've used up a lot of stuff during the lockdown with the kids home, they've really, the girls especially, have really gotten into art supplies and whatnot and so they've used through some of my supplies and so you know you get gaps and empty drawers and I think like Lila might have used up all my polymer clay uh, which is fine because that's that's really one of those supplies you want to use up and replenish when you need it because if it sits for too long it just gets really hard to manipulate especially if you're like me and you have co uh, cold hands it's really tough to manipulate the clay uh, so getting fresh clay is just softer and easier to easier to squish um, so I just kind of want to go through every kind of category of supply I had and then just reorganize it so it's taking up the appropriate amount of space. It isn't kind of spread out because you know how stuff gets kind of spread out, especially if you're um, adding new supplies to the mix. But if you've been using up supplies too, you kind of want to defrag. If you remember how like computers used to work and like your computer would get slow and then you do a disk defrag where it would take all these like, you know, because you delete a file here and you delete a file there and then you'd have this like hard drive that looked like Swiss cheese with all these holes all around and then you defrag it and it would squish all of the stuff, all of your files together. So it just took, like if this was your hard drive, it just took up this much hard drive, then you had all this free hard drive instead of a bunch of Swiss cheese holes all over the place. Technical, huh? I could be a computer science teacher. <laughs> um, so I just needed to defrag the craft room. And so I thought like, well, I should just do that with every category I have and that might be kind of fun. I don't know, I could do like watercolor pencils or I could do like watercolor, water soluble pencils and pastels or crayons. I could do soft pastels, I could do, I'm just trying to think of categories where I have enough stuff that it would be interesting. Um, I don't think I would do stamps because I have so, I have so many stamps would be here for like a week and a half. It would be like election night in America. It would be stamp night at Lindsay's. It would go on and on and on. I need to get Wolf Blitzer over here to <laughs> moderate it. <laughs> and in the antiques, in the antique column we have, we have 20,000 stamps. And in the, uh, <laughs> in the cute animal column we have 25 stamps. And in the nature column we have uh oh this is just coming in we have six binders containing 30,000 stamps i don't know it's probably not that much maybe it is who knows i need a wolf blitzer to come over here and make sense of it all and do some math i'm not doing stamps <laughs> that would be too much but uh um but i thought that would be kind of an interesting uh interesting series i don't know oh something else i want to ask you about um, I was working, I, a couple times this week I just need to chill and de-stress and like draw or color, just do something that was quiet. And um, I got some new pencils to review, I think I showed you last week, they were the Pagos, well I got one set open though, the set I got closed is a watercolor set. Um, these pencils, I'd never heard of the company before but I was intrigued because I'm always looking for inexpensive pencils or actually anything, I am always interested in finding good quality inexpensive supplies that somebody can buy if they're not especially if they're not sure about a pro about a medium like i want to try color pencils but i don't want to spend a hundred dollars on a set of like Derwent or Prismacolor or um, Caran d'Ache or could be more you know they just kind of want to see if they like the medium before they invest um so 
uh, I tried out those pencils and actually I did I did this with just the colored pencils, just some cherries, and I really loved the way it came out. Now I recorded this. I didn't voice it over. I was watch I was binge watching. What's a show that I'm really liking? It's um if you like sci-fi, it's um it's called Wayward Pines, I think. It's on Hulu, but it was a Fox show. I never heard of it, but I'm loving it. Um, so I did this with just the color pencils and then I did use a little Prismacolor white though to just to pop the highlights a little bit because I, most pencil sets I find the whites to be a little lacking so I grabbed my Prismacolor white and then I did, um, then I thought, hmm, I wonder what it would be like to do it in watercolor pencil. So basically I was procrastinating, doing things, other things I should be doing. And I'm like, oh, I wonder what that would, but you know, sometimes your brain just needs to go down those rabbit holes and you just need to see what happens, especially if you're, if you're a creative person, I think you just need to follow, you need to follow the idea down the rabbit hole and see where it goes. So then I did it in watercolor pencils and I really like that effect too. So let's, I'll show you side by side. So I recorded, can I get those both? I'm just peeking in there. Okay, I think I got them both in screen. Hopefully they're both in focus. Um, so this is on watercolor paper. This is like a oatmeal colored watercolor paper and this is just white uh, white watercolor paper. This is color pencil. This is watercolor pencil. Um, so I was, I don't know what to do with the footage. I don't know if I should do like a time lapse for one of them or if I should do a versus video where I do like watercolor pencils versus um, wax color pencils, but I don't know how, because they're long like that, I don't know if I can fit them both on the same screen. I could do like a, a split screen where you see half of one drawing and half of the other. I don't know, or I could shrink it down or something. Um, but then I'm afraid you might not see the detail. Maybe we could shrink and crop it. I, I don't know. I know I'd have to have Jason look at that and see if see what he can figure out. So I could do uh, like a tutorial of one of them because I think if I put two tutorials out, it would be, nobody would watch one of them. One would get watched and one wouldn't. And then, you know, I would be punished by YouTube for releasing a video that nobody wanted to watch. Um, that's how, that's how YouTube works. Oh, you're filling you with all sorts of tech information this week. Um, so, so here's what I'm thinking. I do a tutorial. I, okay, no, I do a time lapse of one of them is choice A. I do a edited down tutorial. So this probably took me like, I don't know, an hour and a half, say. I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the footage. Say it took an hour and a half and then I would have it like, I'd have Jason edit it down so everything's in real time, but a bunch is cut out. So it might be like 30 minutes. So I could do an edited tutorial of one of them or I could do a versus video where I put them both. Um, I make them so in time lapse so they end at the same time, but I'll put like like a little counter. I say I, <laughs> Jason would be doing that. I don't edit anymore. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I outsourced that as quick as I could um, with like maybe a little timer on there showing how long one was taking because the watercolor pencil one was probably took half the time. It was much quicker. Um, so I'm trying to decide what I want to do with that footage. If you have any ideas, if you have a different idea, let me know in the comments below because I really like how it came out um, and I would like to put out some sort of non-boring content for you folks. And then uh, for Critique Club this week, I have, and a time lapse of this will be up on, um, oh, wrong sketchbook, will be on uh, Sketchbook Sunday. Is this sweet little bird here? I don't think I've got glare if I hold it up just like that. Uh, so I thought this would, this was really fun. So this is actually using watercolor pencils and regular color pencils. So I did the background and the first layers in watercolor pencils, and then I did the final layers in color pencil. And I think it's just a fun way to mix those two medias together and um, create something. So that real-time tutorial for this is up in, or will be up in Critique Club on Sunday. And the time lapse of this will be on, uh, will be on my YouTube channel for everyone. Uh, Critique Club, if you don't know what that is, it's uh, over on my school, lindsaywyrick.teachable.com. And I'll put a link to it, to Critique Club in the video description. It's a, um, it's like a monthly membership. It's $5 a month and I post two new long, kind of more advanced tutorials. And it could be any sort of mixed media. It could be uh, watercolor, mixed media, color pencil, pastel, oil, uh, acrylic, gouache. Um, and you have access to all the past tutorials when you're a member. So if you join today, you've got like 40 tutorials right off the bat that you could um, that you could avail yourself to. And, you know, paint the year away. You could just paint and paint and paint until 2020 is over and... <laughs> 
and you'd be you'd be probably all the happier for it. And also, um, you can upload um, two artworks if you want to for a critique from me. So if you're stuck on something or you're working on something, you're trying to grow as an artist and you want some feedback, you can upload your paintings um, and I'll you know give you some guidance on them. And it's also nice to see what other people are going through and you can read the critiques of other students so um, you can kind of see, it, it sometimes helps because especially if you're shy to upload your work, you can see something someone else has uploaded and then hear feedback on it. And I think sometimes not being personally attached to the artwork and seeing a critique or hearing a critique can make you look at your artwork a little more objectively because you've got no skin in the game. If you're looking at someone's painting and you're looking at the, listen, looking at the critique, um, you can look at that objectively and then hopefully you can look at your work more objectively as well. But anyway, um, some people join just for the tutorials. In fact, I would probably say a majority of the folks join for the access to the tutorials, um, which you have access to all of them while you're a member. So if you're interested in that, I'll have that link down below. All right, I did jot down a few things because I felt so scattered this week that I didn't want to, oh, guess what happened? My tea kettle broke, my electric tea kettle. I used to use one of the tea kettles that go on the stove that you that you put water in, but um, I had got one, I don't know if the whistler stopped whistling or something, but there were many occasions where I boiled it dry. I like, I put it on and I'd forget it. And so, um, especially being downstairs, I, I was just, I was, af I was afraid that I was gonna always boil the tea kettle dry. And so, probably like three, I think it was three or four years ago, my husband got me an electric tea kettle for my birthday. And I love that thing. I use it several times a day, uh, worked great. And um, it just stopped working. It was, I actually, it might've been two weekends ago because it was, I think it was the weekend we raked. We raked up all the uh, acorns and leaves and stuff before the snow fell, which, you know, I win the week raking before the snow. Um, of course, you know, there's still leaves in the trees and they all blew down like a windstorm two days later, but you know, I got the first batch out of the yard anyway. Um, oh, what are we at? 21 minutes. Uh, talking about nothing, 21 minutes, um, par for the course. Um, so yeah, it just stopped working. Jason took it apart actually to see if there was anything that could be done. And um, then he looked on Amazon where he bought it and like now they're like only 20 bucks. So we th he easily asked me if, if I wanted him to order another one. And I'm like, you know, I wanna see, if I could do without it because I don't like stuff on the counter and that's always on the counter because I use it several times a day. So I've been microwaving water and using that for my tea. And I think it's the same. I mean, I think it's fine. However, the thing I noticed that with the tea kettle, I would put the tea kettle on and then I would like do a um, kind of like a 10 second tidy. Or if you if your kids ever watched that, what was that show? Oh shoot, there was, there was a clown and she it was a kid's show and she was a clown and then she would do 10 second tidies and she would like run around and they'd pick up the playroom. Big comfy couch. Um, so I do a 10 second tid tidy. So I'd like clear off the table, wipe down the table or load the dishwasher or unload the dishwasher or wash a couple pans. I would like race around to do whatever I could get done at the time the tea kettle goes. But the two minutes that the microwave's going, it's just not that inspiring. I don't know why. I don't know why when the tea kettle is boiling, I'm waiting to see the bubbles. I'm all like, you know, hovering. You know, I put my tea in the, in the microwave and then I, you know, wander off. And, find, and I find it when I hear the when I hear the beeping microwave telling me it's done. It's just not as a, it's not as a, I don't know. I don't feel like I make as good use of those two minutes that I would when the tea kettle was boiling. Maybe the tea kettle took longer. I seem to get a lot done during waiting for that to boil. I don't know. You can tell me your thoughts. Do you have an electric tea kettle? Uh, do you do you like it? I guess I liked mine. I used it a lot, but I don't know if I need it. So I don't know. I've got that. You know, it's the harder in me fighting the minimalist in me. So it's the never-ending battle, I guess. Oh, you guys still want these sat chats? Do you still? <laughs> I can't believe anybody watches this. Um, let's see. Uh, gosh, I think that pretty much that did talk to everything on my list. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I know I think of things all the time. I'm like, oh, I want to mention that sat chat. I forget. I forget exactly what I what I talked about. Oh, oh, I know. I, I'm one week in, almost one week in for my new challenge. So last month I did the figure drawing challenge. I did post a video on that if you want to flip through my sketchbooks because there's more uh, sketches in that video than there was on my Instagram. The Instagram was just the pretty finished artwork. Um, in the video you actually get to see all the rough sketches that accompany the artwork like my practice sketches and my warm-ups and um, the ugly stuff. So if you want to see that, that video I posted Monday. Um, check it out if you're interested. I think it's good to see not all, not 
not only the pretty stuff. I was gonna post it on Instagram as the ones you could swipe to, but I found with like, I don't know, charcoal sketches and Conte crayon and pencils, it just didn't like pop on when I took a photo of it. So um, I decided to just have it in that video if you're interested. Uh, but my new challenge is drinking more water and I've been doing this workout on my phone. It's this app called like Female Fitness and there's a 28 day challenge and I've done it before. Um, and they're not hard workouts. I mean, they're not long workouts, but man, my abs just scream the next day. You know, you're sore, you wake up and you're sore and you're stiff and it's like, oh my word, what did I do? What did I, what did I trip over? What's that? What did I fall yesterday and forget? You know, you're just all sore. Um, so I haven't missed a day yet, but uh, it is almost nine o'clock at night and uh, it was 8.34 and I haven't done my workout. And yesterday was the same thing. I ended up doing my workout at like, nine o'clock at night, which I want to do it first thing in the morning. Um, but then I like to shower at night, so it's better just to do it before that. I do walk the dog every day for an hour, so it's not like I wasn't, I was going from no exercise to just doing this, you know, uh, this, they're only like 10 minute long. They're not, they're not long, but they do seem to be very effective because I'm sore the next day, so I know they're effective. But the thing is, I am not a like, a uh, weight person like I don't I would never choose to lift a weight or to do those weight machines or anything like that so this is all like um, your body weight resistance stuff I think it's called the hit H I I T high intensity interval interval training um, so it's not that intense I mean I think if you were very fit you'd be like that's a piece of cake no problem for me it's you know I'm like trembling but I'm doing the planks and stuff but um, so cardiovascularly, I'm pretty fit, but as far as like strength and uh, muscle tone and stuff like that, I need some work. Uh, and you know, I don't want to. I don't want to slip and fall this winter. I don't want to, or if I do, I don't want to injure myself badly. And I don't want to have osteoporosis when I'm older. And I know a lot of that just comes down to strength training. And um, you know, also the more muscle you have, the more you'll burn fat and hopefully avoid putting on weight. And uh, that's a struggle. That's definitely a struggle as we're in our middle ages. Middle ages, it sounds like knights and, um, <laughs> and knights and plague, which is what we have. We have plague. And uh, yeah, you know, gotta, gotta be fit. Gotta be fit so I can avoid the plague. I don't know, boy, this, this, uh, this sat chat turned into a train wreck, didn't it? Um, I think that's all I have for today. Uh, I have scheduled my video, a lot of my videos for next week because I know I've got all the Art of Carolinas classes and I really want to be super high energy for those. I don't want to be tired. Um, so I've tried to get everything done ahead of time. I haven't done a sat chat yet, though, although I do have a random video that I could put up for sat chat if I don't get something recorded because I might want to take like a really long weekend next week, like, like Thursday to Sunday. I don't know. Um, because I'll be working all weekend. I've got a lot of things I need to get done actually to pre-schedule for next week. Um, I have some deadlines, but um, eh, what else are we gonna do? We're in a pandemic and you know, it's gotten even worse and the, our state has gotten a lot worse. So I'm not so like I'm gonna be going to the disco and dancing the night away. Not that I would on a normal pre-pandemic time either, but it's nice to know that you can, you know? <sighs> I hope your week is going really well. I hope I didn't sound too complainy. I don't like to complain. I don't like to put out the negative vibes because there's enough of that in the world. Um, so I think I'm gonna go do my workout and drink some water. The water drinking part is the toughest part of my challenge. We're gonna drink some water, do my workout, take a shower and call it a day. Thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Don't forget to register for Art of the Carolinas if you want to before 7 p.m. tonight. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.